Come on, Fuji, focus. There we go, finally. And frankly, that's the reason for today's conversation. If you haven't already watched it, last week's video was about Fujifilm's camera firmware update problems and the way these cameras have suddenly struggled to keep things in focus. They updated the tracking algorithm and things are not working the way they should. The lenses are running slower than the tracking, which means that you can never really guarantee you're going to get something in focus. If you want to see more information about that, watch it in my previous video. You can find the link up here or up here, depending on where I decide to put the card. When I first started having those problems with my Fujifilm, I decided it was time to do some empirical testing. So I took my GFX as my main portrait camera, the X-H2S to a portrait shoot with another photographer who needed some new personal branding images. So thank you very much to Tobiah for being, uh, being the subject of this video. While we were taking these photographs, he'd mentioned that he just upgraded to the Sony a7R5 and the new 50mm 1.2 GM lens, so I thought we'd give it a try. Today we're going to have a look at some examples from the Fujifilm GFX 50S, the Fujifilm X-H2S, and the Sony a7R5. People cite Sony's color science as being the main reason for switching away all the time. And as somebody that teaches work for a living, I can absolutely tell you that there is some truth to that. Specifically the Sony a7 III, the a7R IV, and a number of their other older cameras had pretty poor color from the camera. Now the sensors were incredible. If you spend the time with them, you can get absolutely incredible results. But typically, if you're looking for a natural look or a more familiar film-like look, Sony was about as far away as you could probably start. That said, when you spent the time and effort on the images, you really could get some pretty nice results. For me, I switched to Fujifilm because of the color science. And I was really interested once I got these files back, having done the focus test, to see just how big of a difference there actually is. Like, is the GFX the best camera out there possible for color? Does the smaller Fujifilm have an edge in some way? Or does the Sony like now have the, the kind of lead in the color science game? So let's find out. So I've got a couple of sample images here to take a look at and we can kind of compare to find out which we prefer. Now, these three images are about as close as I'd actually compared on the day. The idea was to test the focusing system and not to test the color science specifically. So that if you're looking at these images and thinking, well, there's no tree in the background here, we'll come on to that in a minute. These frames don't perfectly match, the framing isn't the same. That's because I wasn't actually setting out to compare these three things for this test. I just have the files now and was really interested to see just what an improvement that Sony have made really. So with all three of these images, I want you to ask yourself, can you tell the difference? One of these is medium format, one of them is APS-C, and the other one is Sony full frame. So we're going to have a look at each of these in turn, and I'd like you to tell me what you think of these images. Okay, so place your bets now, camera A, camera B, and camera C. Now to my eye, Camera C has by far the best color. There's just something about the way that Tobias' skin tones look. They are really, really pleasing. The background doesn't have any significant color cast. There's a nice kind of color character in the shadow area behind his shoulder. Generally, this image looks more pleasing to me, and his skin tone especially just looks more natural. But look at things like the undertone in his skin. There is like an, a slight warmness here, like a peachy orange color, whereas the image in the middle sh shifts a lot more magenta, and the image on the left, actually goes even further towards kind of a greeny yellow undertone. The image on the left hand side is actually the Sony. This is the Sony a7R5 with the GM 50mm 1.2. And there are some redeeming features of this, of this uh, system. There's quite a lot of detail here, like an awful lot of detail. When we're looking at this image in the Sony, this sensor is absolutely enormous. It's got 60 odd megapixels and generally the focus is flawless. You can see the focal plane accommodates his eyes, his lips and his mouth, but not at the front of his nose and no further back. I can say that it was really easy for me to select this photograph out of a range because they were all in focus. So at that point, I just looked for the moment that I liked the best, kind of like the stoic expression in the shot. And I thought it was a really similar framing to the following image, which is the medium format Fujifilm GFX 50S. Now this is manually focused. I shoot this camera with a Voigtlander 58mm 1.4. And when you zoom in close, like there isn't as much detail per se. I actually find this image a little bit more pleasing than the Sony. Like the skin tones being a little bit more yellow here is off-putting to me at least. And when we look at the file from the GFX, it's a little bit nicer. Now I didn't particularly edit these images to match. I edited them to try and make each individual image look 
as good as I could make it with the same preset or profile. One thing I did find is my normal profiles, the archetype process, did not look as good on the Sony files as it did on the Fuji. So I wanted to find a bit more of a neutral base. So we're using good light presets here. They do an incredible job of normalizing cameras like right out of the box. They were using the M6 profile from their Pack 4. This was developed for Eric McVeigh. Eric McVeigh does shoot with the GFX, so we know that it's going to look good on the GFX. But actually, I think it looks pretty nice on the, on the Sony, and it looks absolutely incredible on the small Fuji. Overall, I'd still say the image from the GFX was more pleasing from a color point of view than the Sony. The main difference being that I had to slowly manually focus this camera to get this result. There isn't a native Fuji lens at the moment, at least, that would give a rendering similar to the 50mm 1.2 on the uh, on the a7r4 so if you want shallow depth of field on the gfx you're kind of stuck with a very limited set of choices fuji make an 80 millimeter 1.7 which is a little bit longer um or you can use third party lenses like this that are going to give you a bit more of a normal field of view with that nice shallow depth of field depth of field aside i love the rendering of this image i like the color a lot and frankly the sony is in the ballpark but is not quite as nice but then we come to the X-H2S. And I want you to have a look at the right-hand side of the image here. This panel is completely untouched. We've basically dropped the exposure slightly, tweaked the white balance, applied the profile, and it's done. I have said this before. I think the X-H2S has got something special. I think the sensor is absolutely stunning. And the focus issues that we're having with it right now are genuinely the only reason I wouldn't buy one. They're amazing. Out of these three images, to go back to them, I think there's a clear winner for my, for my taste anyway, and it's definitely, definitely the Fujifilm X-H2S. I would go for the central image as a secondary option. I definitely think that the GFX does a great job too, and I would probably put the Sony in dead last place. However, I wanted to compare something else. So let's have a look at these three images. Now, these aren't in the same environment, but they are from the three cameras again, and maybe not the ones you'd think. The image on the left is from the Sony. The image in the middle, once again, is from the GFX, and the image on the right is from the X-H2S. And in this situation, I find it way more difficult to say that one has better or worse color. And that's to say, like, normally you're not going to be sitting there looking at the images side by side on the screen. You'll tweak the images to the best effect, and if it looks good to your eyes, it looks good. And I think this is proof here. Like the image on the left here of Tobiah standing in front of what was essentially just like a, a shingled roof. I think it looks really cool. Nice minimal portrait. No distractions. The eye is like perfectly, perfectly sharp. And it looks awesome. The GFX has a nice kind of characterful film vibe. I honestly think that the X-H2S again is doing absolute work in terms of color. When you look at his skin, it looks more saturated with more accurate rendition and generally more pleasing than the other two images. Now, would I give up the shallow depth of field from the Sony to go to the Fuji? That's probably the way you should be making this decision. When you're deciding between these two cameras, there are factors other than color involved. And I can absolutely say I had never touched the A7R5 before, not once, but it was immediately intuitive and incredibly easy to use. I half pressed the shutter and it just did not let go of Tobias' eye. He could run, he could do whatever he wanted, and things would be rock solid. The other thing to mention is that I shoot my Fuji's in quite a specific way. So the colouring and dynamic range you get in this image, and the way that the tones are mapped, if we look at the develop module, again, literally no tweaks at all on the X-H2S. The reason this is the case is because I shoot with the dynamic range setting on the Fuji set to 400. And when you set the Fuji to DR400, it means your minimum ISO is 640, but you get significantly nicer dynamic range. You get a mid-tone boost and a compression in the highlights and a raising in the shadows. So a lot of what I would do in post-production, which is exactly that, reduce the highlights, boost up mid-tones, and then just set my black point, it's done in camera, and that's why this looks so good. I mean, good light are helping out a lot here as well. They'd make incredible profiles. But honestly, the Fuji's doing a lot of the work in the camera. And when we compare the other two options, if you look at what's happening here, I've raised the exposure on the medium format camera, I've brought the highlights down and the whites and compressed the shadows and the blacks because I want mid-tones to stand more prominent. And that's exactly what's happening here. 
So really, the reason I don't have to make any changes here is because Fuji give you the tools to do these things in camera. Now on the Sony, it's a similar story. The values are different, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to bring the highlights down slightly, bring the whites down slightly to give it a smoother roll off, raising the shadows very slightly, and then setting a rich black point once I've boosted the midtones. But in this case, it is worth mentioning that the fastest edit out of all three of these was, without a doubt, the XH2S. It just looks good off the bat. That said, I want to talk real numbers. For me to get 90 images from each of these cameras in focus, I had to shoot 97 on the, on the Sony. I had to shoot about 98 on the GFX because I basically because I slowed down like to be fair like I wasn't trying to make it do anything complicated but on the XH2S I actually shot 480 photographs and ended up with 87 keepers and that to me is the main issue we have right now as I mentioned in the last video Fujifilm are working on this problem at the moment. Um, I actually had one of the reps reach out to me within an hour of the last video going up. The customer service has been fantastic. But in the end, if you were to make a purchase decision right now, you can only do it based on what the cameras do currently and what, not what they'll do in the future. And if you don't have the time to wait for them to fix these problems, you're going to have to make another choice. And I've compared these three options here, but spoilers come in later. I've actually picked up a Canon camera that I'll be testing soon. It's really difficult to make investment decisions in this age that we're in now where firmware updates can completely change the way that a camera operates and i think part of the problem is that sometimes there isn't the quality put into making sure those firmware updates are working the way that they're intended now fujifilm have been incredible about reaching out and saying they're working on this issue so we should see a conclusion of this problem very very soon but until we get that conclusion I just need to make you aware that I can't recommend X-H2S despite it looking this good straight out of camera, despite the colors being that nice. Speaking about a camera, let's have a look at these three images together. These three are the same shots as before, but straight out of camera. So the sequence is inverted for some reason, but on the right hand side, we've got the Sony. In the middle, we've got the GFX. And on the left, we've got the X-H2S. And I think this is pretty clear. Like when you're looking at the three, the GFX just looks nicer out of camera. Like straight away, like the experience you'll have shooting this, you'll get much nicer colors if you don't do anything. If you're the kind of photographer that doesn't want to invest in custom profiles or presets, you can just add contrast to the GFX and it will look good. Simple as that. Whereas I believe the Sony would need some significant color tweaking. And actually, to be honest, the same with the Fujifilm. Like this is not a pleasing skin tone, but not in the same way as the, as the Sony. If I had to kind of describe it, the GFX feels like a middle point where the skin tones are neutral and a little bit more rich. The Sony has a little bit more of a greeny yellow sort of skin tone, which makes things look a little bit sickly. And the Fujifilm tends to lean a little bit warmer than I would personally pick. It's a little bit pinky, a little bit kind of orangey. But once you go through and work those images, they look absolutely incredible. Now, in terms of color rendition once you've edited, I just want to point this out. I don't think you would ever see a situation where somebody would complain at the colors in these images in isolation. I picked this different image on the right hand side this time because it includes some more of the green. So even though the framing and cropping is different, it's it's got more colors for you to look at. And even though my preference personally is for Fujifilm's colors, and I cannot wait for them to fix the issues with focus on the X-H2S, in the past I have criticized Sony for having bad color. That's not the case anymore. The color on the left hand side of this image is actually really pleasant and really, really workable. If I was to try and make sure that this matched perfectly with the two, I could probably get there with some tweaking. If this was my camera system, and it is for many other people, we could sit down, find your original source images that you were comparing against, say if you'd switch from Canon to Sony, and we could probably pretty, pretty easily get you to a point where the image on the left matches the image on the right in terms of color. However, if you wanted to make the camera on the right focus more accurately, that is literally impossible. So as much as it's a luxury to have a, color, a camera with nice color science, it is absolutely not essential when Sony's color science has come on this far. I am really, really impressed 
with just how nice Sony's images look. When you're not directly comparing them in the same light, in the same scene, these images end up looking just as pleasing as one another. There is absolutely no reason why you should choose the middle camera over the one on the left if you're talking about color. And again, the X-H2S, even though I prefer the color, is not providing you a better overall package at the moment. When that changes, I'll definitely update you because frankly, I think this camera is going to be a bit of a bargain at the price that it's at. Because again, the other two cameras in this comparison, remember, the Sony retails, I believe, at around about £4,000. The GFX is currently quite affordable. They're currently selling used at about £1,900. But this was initially a very, very expensive camera. By contrast, the X-H2S, its recommended retail price is 2500 and the lens that's on it is only £650. So when you're looking at these three options, I want you to weigh it up. If you need something that's going to focus like super reliably and accurately, but colour is important to you, the Sony is still a viable option. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't get good colour out of a Sony, because you absolutely can. Is it objectively as good as some of the other options? I would argue no. Like I actually think that Fuji's crop sensor cameras are pretty much the gold standard based on what we're looking at here. The GFX is an absolutely wonderful machine. And for me, the reason why I shoot with it is nothing to do with... It's not really anything to do with the image quality in itself. I love the fact that it slows me down. I get a perspective and a look that is a little bit different. And it makes me work in a different way. It's something that I'm really appreciative of. Scenes like the one on the right which are quite static, and not things that I'd normally do in my work. But this scene was set up for the GFX, and I just grabbed the X-H2S to get another frame to compare it against. What does this mean for you? If you're on the fence, buy whatever camera you want. If something feels good in the hand, if something feels like it's going to perform well, it is going to be a good choice for you. If there are issues with color science, you can fix those problems later with education, in many cases with presets and other tools, or a combination of the above, which is actually my recommendation. I love that people make tools to match these cameras together and learning how to use those well is massively important. I want to kind of put it out there that I no longer hate Sony Color. And it's not not to jump on the bandwagon. I still think I still think the A7 III has bad color, but that's no longer the case with the current crop of cameras. I've seen stills from the X uh, sorry, the A7S3, uh, which is a 12 megapixel camera, so not ideal for stills, but still has beautiful color. The A7R5 has beautiful color, and the A7R4, although not quite as nice as this, slightly worse in practice, is a massive step forward from where they were previously. If you're buying a current Sony camera, you are not going to be disappointed with the color you get out of it. When you're buying a new camera, it's absolutely fine to consider usability over color science at this point, in my opinion. Sony, in my in my view, had the worst colors of any camera out there. And now their cameras easily compete with the best in the industry. It's not quite as good, but we're talking like one or 2% worse and not 20, 30% worse like it used to be. And even then with work, you can make any of these look absolutely stunning. If your style is not natural and film-like, the Sony might actually give you an advantage because the colors are technically more true to life, as in more real. Um, but in practice, that tends to be less flattering. Fuji's on the other end of the spectrum where the skin tones aren't real, but they are pretty flattering out of the box. So if realism and accuracy matters to you, the Sony might actually be the preferred choice. But anyway, I'm digressing. If you need ultimate performance, there is nothing wrong with looking at a Sony or a Canon to try and get you something with perfect autofocus. If you're more interested in character, the GFX is an incredible option. But realistically, if the only thing that matters to you is the feel and color of your image, I really do think you can't go wrong with the X-H2S. It's a beautiful camera with the enormous caveat that right now you can't rely on it to focus continuously. All that said, that's all we've got for you for this time. If you've got any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and we'll be chatting soon. One final bonus point. One final bonus point. These Fuji files on the X-H2S are not what came out of the camera. Adobe introduced something called the denoise function. And since they released it, I have used it on every single Fuji image. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about why I do that and the effect that it has on the image, drop a comment below and I'll make that my next video. But for now, thanks again, guys. I'll see you in the next one.